Uh, I'll throw the number out. I assume you guys will just call on your own because I don't. There's no cute question here. Uh, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Now look, I've got a lot to say, and I've never really, I've never really had consideration for what's popular, what's not. I'm going to tell you how I feel, and I know we live in a society today where if you don't join the angry mob, you're consumed by it. Um, but I'm not going to join them. I, I, I have to tell you that, look, I think we're living in a very dangerous time right now. And I think you're seeing it unfold with this mob mentality where facts have no place in, in the uh, activity of burning it to the ground only to move on to the next thing, to burn it to the ground. And um, I'm sorry, but no, I'm not a blind defender. Um, I'm not an apologist. If you guys believe that about me at, at 2.01 in the afternoon, then you've either spent no time listening to this show over my 15 years in this city and or you have no intention of having dialogue. So I'm going to shoot you straight. You know how I felt about the Larry Nasser proceedings, how angry I am at my university, the people that I blamed. I never wavered from that. But... I found what ESPN did Friday and has done all weekend and is doing today. It's disgusting. I think it's dishonest. I think it's an absolute hit piece on Mark D'Antonio and Tom Izzo. And when you're splicing in cuts of that vile, monstrous scumbag, Larry Nasser, and somehow trying to now draw conclusions by repackaging old news, things that were investigated, things that were handled, I'm sorry. That, that's not journalism. That's TMZ. And look, the original OTL report, let's start with Lauren Allsweet for a minute. Um, look, I think she's highly irresponsible. You want to go on national television and impugn the character of Tom Izzo and Mark D'Antonio, you better bring something to the table, Lauren. Where's the documentation, Lauren? Where's your evidence, Lauren? You had a front row seat in your worlds to a toxic culture and a, uh, th th this idea that MSU somehow uh, e empowers uh, sexual assault and doesn't care about it. Where is your proof? Where's the documentation? Oh, wait, you never so much as talked to D'Antonio Rizzo but you're going to destroy their reputations because of your opinions? Better yet, why didn't you do anything about it? Now, I'm sorry. The ESPN report on Friday, very convenient. Nasser gets sentenced. All right, roll it. Cutscenes of the Sparty statue interspliced with a touchdown into Larry Nasser. You're tying things in together that you have no proof belong together. The scandal at MSU for Larry Nasser is absolutely disgusting. And I hope the several people at that school that did empower him and didn't do the right thing find the same fate as him. No Spartan is out here defending that. No Spartan is out here apologizing uh, uh, for bad people. That's not happening. But to repackage old news and call it Spartan Secrets... That's nothing more than opportunistic, nasty, TMZ, hit piece garbage. It's garbage. It's part of the reason why that company's going out of business. I want, uh, you know what? I want Lauren Allsweed to provide proof. I want to see Lauren Allsweed's uh, documentation. I want ESPN to bring real answers to light because then guess what? I'll be the guy to light the match to burn my own school down. But what's going on right now when you're titling things crisis at Michigan State and it's not about Larry Nasser, then you're missing the message. That's the crisis going on at Michigan State. Tying in D'Antonio and Izzo and trying to repackage what went down. You know, I'll tell you this too. And I'm getting off task here because I'm very emotionally tied into this. Look at the headlines that have run. 
And then if you follow the news, tell me how disingenuous they are. It's irresponsible. The, you, know what, you know what the media's job is to do? Report the truth. Report the facts. Not part of it, not some of it, all of it. Don't say that there were four sexual assaults under D'Antonio last year without mentioning that he dismissed them without so much as due process. Oh, there was a sexual assault in 07 that D'Antonio wasn't aware of until 2014. What is he, Zoltar, the mind reader? Find me proof. That's your job. Not to run some piece showing a shadowy figure of, of Sparty and then Lauren Allsweed picking flowers. You taped it in August. You care about what's going on? Don't come on the morning show today and tell me, oh, all of a sudden, hmm, this Nasser thing might be a, a bigger story and we can put it all together. Yeah, a lot of respect for the victims, right? You'll tell me you have it. You waited 24 hours to run that hit job. I want facts, not hearsay, not opinions, not framing information to fit a narrative. I want facts. That's the job of the media. That's the job of journalists. And when you are going out, even in a suggestive manner, much less an outright slanted manner, and trying to paint Mark D'Antonio and Tom Izzo as not only tolerant of sexual assault, but empowering of that behavior, all I ask is you better bring good ammunition, real good stuff. Not stuff that the prosecutor wouldn't prosecute. Not stuff where no charges were ever filed. Not stuff where Title IX was brought in or the police were brought in. Bring me the illicit cover-up. Bring me the emails. Bring me the phone calls. Bring me the intimidation of witnesses. Those were the things that went on at Penn State and Baylor in their revenue sports department. Bring that, and I will light the match to burn my school down. That piece ran Friday. What have you learned since then? It has been nothing but adding more icing to the same cake. That's not journalism. I just think there's a big difference between when you you want to go after somebody and say they should be fired for a play action pass. You don't exactly need a ton of proof. It's an opinion. But when you are going to try to intimate that people haven't handled things correctly, then give examples of that. Not things that were covered. Not things that there were press conferences for. Not things that are, are gone. You don't get to rewrite history. And if you're going to attempt to do it, then I need evidence. That's the job of real journalism. Investigative journalism. Do the outside investigation. I welcome it. There's not a Spartan out there that doesn't. Have the attorney general. Get the feds. Do whatever needs to happen. But that's not, that's not what ESPN's OTL piece is. It's not. I think trying to attach the atrocities of Larry Nasser and the people involved in that to D'Antonio and Izzo is reckless at this point in time. But see, the angry mob doesn't have time to determine what's reckless and not and what's fact and fiction. You show me the proof. You show me the wrongdoings. Again, I will be the loudest voice there is to destroy my school. I have no tolerance for this. But I also have no tolerance for people's character to be impugned with nothing more than dramatic, slanted, narrative, and seemingly agenda-driven pieces. Does Tom Izzo have questions to answer regarding this alleged second Travis Walton occurrence incident? Yes, he does. 
Did Tom do a good job at the press conference yesterday? No, he didn't. D'Antonio, on the other hand, dropped the microphone. Basically said, come and get it. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. All of these reports are essentially nonsense. You don't think people are going to check that out? Mark doubled down. And if he is found to have evaded Title IX, if he is found to have held up police investigations, had coaches intimidate witnesses, fire him. I'll launch him out of a cannon verbally. But you don't get to do that unless you bring stuff to the party. And I don't see that. Don't talk to me about what happened last year when he kicked off four players. Oh, Keith Mumphrey, you want to bring that up? He had already graduated. But see, you're not getting context. You're not getting the real story. Real journalists present the facts and allow the reader to determine what is right and what is wrong. That's not happening right now. Show me the email cover-up that goes to the president like at Penn State. Burn it to the ground. Show me what went down at Baylor, where coaches are out there intimidating witnesses, victims, the police are involved, the board of trustees is involved. Show it to me. Don't just give me some repackaged truth that you want to use in a different way today. Like, I feel like I'm alone in this. I feel like I'm the only one who's willing to voice this opinion. And I know what's happening out there. I'm not stupid. I know exactly what's going to happen this afternoon. Headline, Mike defends Michigan State. At this current time, show me the proof. I want real reporting. I want real investigations. No, I'm not going to scream for D'Antonio and Izzo to be fired today. That's outrageous. But that's the world we live in, where accusations are presented as truth and the trial is done before it begins. It's not right. It's not right. MSU deserves a ton of heat right now. A ton. And it's for what the atrocities of Larry Nasser and the empowerment of that. Making a tie into D'Antonio and Izzo. You know what's funny? Sully showed me something this weekend. And it is amazing. The same writer at ESPN writes a piece in 2015, a year after allegedly OTL started investigating Michigan State's athletic department. And the writer comes to the conclusion that that there is no difference between how athletes and regular students are treated as it pertains to the letter of the law, that there is no preferential treatment like you have seen at other schools. That same writer two years later put on a different set of shoes and started tapping to some different music to come back and suggest that whatever she wrote in 2015 is all wrong. And that indeed, there is a culture of toxicity, of cover-up, of empowerment, and of sheer incompetence. Or worse. Really? Because the time between the initial report and your next article... Four players were accused, and they were all booted from the program before we ever knew whether they were innocent or guilty. So what changed? People want to get down on Michigan State because they fight requests to name players who, by the way, were exonerated. If you don't understand why they do it, or you don't understand that that's how all schools operate, then you're clueless. Why would I give a name out for someone who was exonerated? Do you understand what is attached when you are accused in the world we live in of some of the things that these players were accused of? Why would I give you that information? And what purpose would it serve? I'm all for transparency, but sometimes transparency doesn't line up with common sense.
And I feel like we lack common sense. And Mike, I know I'm over the time here, but you got to give me a minute. I'm not joining the angry mob until I have a reason to. And then I'll be at the front of the line. I'm not blindly defending my school. I am asking for real journalism. I'm asking for new reports. I am asking for actual documentation. I thought the Friday OTL piece was a hit job. I think Lauren Allsweed comes off very poorly. I think there should be some questions asked of her. Because if you saw these things going down in front of you, and you didn't document them, and you didn't tell anybody, and you didn't go to authorities, then you're just as bad as the rest, Lauren. I think it's highly irresponsible to go on national television and call into question the heart and soul and character and integrity of D'Antonio and Izzo when you didn't even have a conversation with them. But you know how they feel? Interesting, she's been walking her comments back a little bit lately. Sully has printed out something that we'll get to a little bit later. You find out that Lauren Allsweed, while she was picking flowers in the garden, that was taped in August. Convenient they waited till a day after Nasser to drop the bomb. That's not investigative journalism. It's opportunistic journalism. I've got a lot more to say, and I have four hours to do it. So we will do it. We need to catch up on the clock. I understand that. I'll throw the number out. I've tried to explain myself as clearly as possible. I know that'll get lost in translation. I know some of you can't see past a rivalry. I think you're disgusting. I think you're juvenile. I think you're children. And don't you dare call up making wild claims and saying you're doing it because you care about the victims. Don't do it. I know your game. I know what you are. 